Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Talks. Today we're talking about the SE blind spot in the INFP and the INTP. And so Christian, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Hi, I'm Christian. Um, I'm an INFP and um, I do research on um, the African diaspora, the Spanish empire and the Atlantic world in the early, in the early modern period. Cool. And Spacey? I'm Spacey. I study typology. I have a YouTube channel where I occasionally post videos about typology. And I also offer typing services. Uh, just hit up my channel. And my contact information will be on many of my videos. And I'm sure Joyce will put it down below. Awesome. My name's Joyce. And I'm a certified MBTI practitioner. And I facilitate the instrument and organizations. And so SE Polar, in Socionics, the INFP and the INTP have SE in their blind spot or their point of least resistance. And we're here to talk about it today. Christian and Spacey, what is your experience with the SE blind spot? <laughs> it makes it really hard to begin things. Hmm. I have a complete and total lack of awareness of the real world. <laughs> that's, that's essentially how it works There's for me. That. Yeah. Um, I'm fairly disconnected from reality. And I think um, my ADHD exacerbates that. So I'm very much more in my head than I am present um, or aware of what's going on around me. Um, so that's like the really big thing for how I experience SE blind spot. It is almost literally a blind spot because I'm not aware. Mm. Yeah, I think it, it produces in, in the INFP and the INTP both a very like, he said, <laughs> cerebral person who's like really, really stuck in their head mm -hmm. and totally tuned off to their external reality mm -hmm. um, at the extreme, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's definitely in our, like, in our unconscious. Um, so we're not very aware. It sort of like has control over us, then probably we have more control over it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Yeah, it seems like with the INFPs and the INTPs I invite on panels, they'll often talk to me about how it's hard for them to begin things in the real world. I noticed that they spend a lot of time ideating and brainstorming and coming up with ideas, mm -hmm. but it takes a long time for them to get into action and just doing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they never do with most things, a lot with mm -hmm. a lot of my friends who are INFPs or INTPs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where does that come from? Oh, well, I, I, I would say for me, it comes from a couple things. I think that I, I think it comes a lot from perfection. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, the way I imagine things in my own mind um, is always perfect. And then because of experience, I know that if I try to implement that in the real world um, or take some action to do it in the real world, that it's not going to live up to how I envision it. So I just, I think I sometimes use that as an excuse to just not start anything or do anything. Cause I'd rather it, I'd rather the idea like maintain its purity um, than be like tainted <laughs> by real world practicalities. So, um, and also too, like, I think that um, I just, there's something comforting about um, the way things exist in my mind. Um, I, 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 a lot of it I think is tied to just like not being disappointed um, that if things don't turn out the way that I would like them to. So there's like a sense of comfort in, in kind of saying, staying stuck in an idea or ideas and just kind of thinking about them. Um, 
I would say a lot of it is rooted in fear, <laughs> to be honest. I, I, um, just afraid. Um, so yeah, that's why I tend to not do, I have a hard time starting things a lot. Um, I, I, even to this day, like I, I'm going to be applying to grad school later in the fall and I have all of, I have things that I need to do, um, for, my grad school applications, including a writing sample. And I have, I've been struggling even just recently these past few weeks of just trying, of just getting something down on paper. But like, I'm so in my mind about like how I want things to be that like, I'm afraid of just even putting something down on paper. So it's a, it's a constant struggle basically. <laughs> yeah, fear is a really interesting topic. It brings up this interesting interesting point of view where if you're experiencing inaction, consider that it might be fear-based. And so there's a fear that needs to be tackled there mm -hmm. as well. I noticed that with my IP friends, they tend to be really self-critical on themselves. Like whatever they produce, there's this mm -hmm. extreme self-critic. With one of my INFP friends, they're able to write such beautiful songs and poems, but they just never put themselves out there because they can always like beat themselves up for it. This goes for anyone who has self-esteem issues too, but it's mm -hmm. it's like, I notice it with a lot of, especially INFPs, maybe INTPs don't voice it with me as often, but, but I noticed yeah. that with my INFP friends, no matter how great it is, the thing that they produce, they always beat it up like 10 times, 10 times 10, and they find mm -hmm. a reason to not put themselves out there. And so I tend to be the sole witness or the sole fan of their creations very often with my friends who are that type. Not all INFPs, but I notice that there is definitely a trend there. Mm -hmm. I think Absolutely. a lot of what you both said applies to INTPs as well. I think mm -hmm. both both types are super self-critical and hold yeah. themselves to like a really high standard, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like... Uh, what you said, Joyce, definitely resonated with that is something that I've been working through in therapy of not like being so self-critical. Um, I'm really critical of myself. And like I was watching, um, I, I felt so connected. I was watching it. Um, American Idol. Yes, it's one of my guilty pleasures. I was walking, watching American Idol the other day and a contestant, he did a fantastic job. Um, but at the very end of his song, um, he messed up a little bit and he started crying and um, the judges were like, why are you crying? He's like, I messed up. It wasn't perfect. And like that hit me so hard because I felt him on such a deep level because that's how I feel like if it, like that's how I would feel in that situation. And that's how I have felt in many situations like it wasn't perfect. And so there it was awful. And the judges were saying, no, 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 like, like that lack of perfection is what makes it beautiful and what, what makes it real and human and what makes it artistic. And it just, but he was like crying and crying. He was, you know, he was receiving it well, but like, I, I felt that so much. And I, I really think that is definitely um, uh, a, a trait in IN, INPs for sure. That's really interesting, Christian. And that's in stark contrast with the EJs. So whenever mm. I interview an EJ, they're like, oh, it's good enough. I'll put it out there. Especially the ENTJs will say that like, oh, it's good enough. They have SE too. And they're like, I'll just right. put it out there. While the INPs are like, it's not perfect. Then it's awful. They're like, ergo, it's awful. And I'm like, right, no, right. just put it out there. <laughs> it's, it's such unhealthy, like black and white thinking. <laughs> like, it's not perfect, therefore it's bad. Like, that's terrible. That's, it's not healthy. <laughs> well, you know, when you spend your whole life in search of perfection, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Basically. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with pretty much everything. I think SE Polar, or I don't know if it's like that with any polar function or or any case of inaction i guess as you said joyce but it's pretty much either fear-based or laziness based 99 percent of the time mm -hmm. some theorists would argue that laziness comes from fear that you're not addressing right yeah i've heard that too yeah yeah 
I, I, I would say that definitely. Um, cause it's not like, cause so, so many instances in my life, um, especially like ADHD, like people who have ADHD, like get this a lot, like, Oh, you're lazy. You don't care. But it's like, we actually care so much <laughs> that we're afraid to actually do something. Um, so, cause we have to have it perfect again. Cause like we, you know, neurodivergent brains tend to be very like black, white thinking sometimes. So, um, so yeah, it's like, actually it's because we care too much. <laughs> so there's a fear. So it comes off as laziness, like, Oh, I don't care. But really it's like, I I noticed if I'm honest with myself, I noticed that I, that I intentionally use perfection as a roadblock. Cause I'm afraid of failure or, you know, or even just the pressure of success. So, so yeah, it's, it's definitely like a defense mechanism. I think in the case of the INTP, maybe um, the fear is largely based around lo looking incompetent. I think mm, we, I, we expect yeah. we expect like our uh, our skills to like match up with our knowledge or like our bodies to to match up with our minds, and that never actually happens, as we know from experience. You know, yeah. so it's like we 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 hate looking like an idiot when we should know better. Um, yeah. I, I, I would say like I have a similar experience personally because I have an ESTJ mom. So having like TE dominant, like everything, like I think that probably contributed to my perfectionism. So like everything had to be done like a very specific and a very right way. And so like I've always felt really incompetent because I always, I felt like, because I, I would get chastised a lot for like not following directions, not following through on things, not doing everything exactly the way that um, I was told to do them. So I felt uh, like an idiot most of the time. So that like my one of my biggest fears has been looking incompetent because of my own childhood upbringing. Yeah, it seems like Christian, what you're talking about, too, is a lack of practical common sense. So it's like with practice, <laughs> with, yeah, yeah, yeah yes. like yes. with day to day things, it seems like it oh. comes less naturally, and you get shamed a bit for not being able to get those day to day things, like those sensory things. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, you hit the nail mm -hmm. right on the head. Oh, um, I mean, <laughs> I feel like this is why I, I I bond so much with INTPs as well because I feel like we're both both types are like very impractical and don't have like a lot of common sense i guess you could say <laughs> i don't know like yeah pretty much no <laughs> i'm always accused of not having any common sense or i i used to be i guess i've gotten a lot better uh, in the last few years but yeah holy shit <laughs> so in what areas do you both struggle with common if sense if you lead with introverted judgment your your sense can be in no way common Mm -hmm. that's my view of it at this point yeah is it because it's it's so subjective like it's yeah, individual exactly it's dependent on the each individual person's own personal values or own subjective principles yeah we actually have our own entire understanding of the world yeah like that's true that's yeah. so true and like i was like but wait like i understand it this way like why does the other way have to be the right way yeah <laughs> Yeah, the JI functions, they kind of have a mind of their own. They create their beliefs from the ground up. That's why right. it's normally associated with being individualistic mm -hmm. because it's self-made. <laughs> so right, right. when Jung says that the introverted functions are subjective, what Jung is saying is that they originate from the self. And so both the right. FI and the TI user are going to have beliefs that are very- Out there. Uh, Idiosyncratic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. Idiosyncratic and out there. Yep. Yeah, like I, I remember in Jung says in psychological types when he's talking about uh, the TI type, he says even if like the data is objective, like even if the the um, TI type is um, observing um, or making some sort of judgment on like an objective on objective data, like external empirical data, like it's still refers back to his subjective interpretation of it. So it does, so it's not like, just look like accepting it as is, like it has to go fil be filtered back in through the subject. 
That is true. Mm. And this can cause them to sometimes clash with the tribe or with the group or with the crowd because mm -hmm. they might have an opinion that's different than the crowd. Yeah. And this can cause a fear and paralysis too because you're used to sometimes getting bad reactions from, from the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it makes you hyper sensitive to those possible bad reactions. I think it's especially cute for INPs because we have SI. So I know it's like, I don't know, sometimes there's like, SI is not memory, but like, um, <laughs> but I mean, like, I think that like, there's still some sort of storing of past experience, I think, or at least like a sub subjective past experience in in consciousness or in the unconscious or whatever. So like, I think that we, so we have this store of knowledge of past experiences. So like, I think it's especially cute for us to like not say anything or maybe be shamed or not to like be as assertive about these idiosyncratic opinions or thoughts because we just don't would rather not deal with the hassle of like having to explain ourselves or to be ridiculed right so yeah there kind of is a sense of if, if we're not afraid of what's going to happen there's pro it's probably the situation i think it's probably about the same for both uh, both of us types where it's like uh I I know how this is gonna go. Like I've mm -hmm. seen it all by now. I know how it's gonna play out. I might as well not even bother. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. I think that is one side of SE polar, maybe. Yeah. Like because like you know, I, I guess people like SPs see each like situation as like as its own unit, like and is like and they're just focusing on like the now so it's not like well this next moment could be different whereas like oh si we're like well we've seen it all before where it could be different but we're maybe we don't take that into account at the yeah. very least we'll convince ourselves that it will never be different yeah <laughs> i think right. again, i think yes exactly and i think that's also probably rooted in fear like we're afraid so we just convince ourselves well it's it's never going to change, so why bother? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lacking that SE, it makes you rely more on your SI. And your SI is like, well, the past was like that. So what gives you incentive that the future will be different than the past? And so right. it, it can cause a further inaction. <laughs> right, well, there's exactly. There's so many compounding effects. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We just mm -hmm. sort of do this to ourselves. <laughs> uh-huh. And so let's say someone has an INFP or INTP in their life who is stuck in inaction. How would you help this individual get out of that? Or what has helped you that your friends have done or your, your spouse has done that has helped you grow that SC or, or make up compensate for the lack of SC? Hmm. Well, you have to get their interest. Hmm. Hmm. Mainly. Something, something that just jerks them into uh, focusing on something sort of against their will. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that as well. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get more specific than that, but like, you know, sometimes even when I was really depressed, like there were things that like I would get absorbed in. Yeah, I, I think like, it, I think maybe helping somehow the INP to tap into their extroverted functions. <laughs> so probably, I think the common answer would be tap into your NE so you can see other possibilities. Um, so I think that's I think that's part of it. I think um, I think the the interest thing is really in, is really on point though. Um, like especially for me, um, like if. I think, especially for probably for anybody who has ADHD as well, which correlation and E and ADHD. But anyways, um, <laughs> it, like, it, like if you're not like the, the, the again like the with ADHD, is, there's the black and white thing. Like if you're not really interested in something, like you just don't care about it at all. So, 
so, so that helps when you somehow try to make it like interesting or like try to like incorporate an IMP's like interest or passion um, into whatever you know they you're trying to get them to do. Um, but also, I think maybe just a, a lot of it just is I think like internal work of just trying to. Um, do some like self-talk or self-soothing and saying like it's not it's not as bad as you think it is like it, it, you know you're competent and you can you can do whatever you put your mind to sometimes like i mean obviously that depends on the person sometimes like that kind of self-talk doesn't work for others but i think like it just learning how somehow to like reframe your mind to get the person to do to get the INP to take action or to do something if yeah. they're stuck. Uh-huh. Because it can very easily just stay as an idea if they don't mm -hmm. take action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I noticed with extroverted intuition too, sometimes it's easy to avoid doing things because then you can just think of another path you could take. And then that path looks so attractive. And so you forget about the other one that you should probably follow through on. <laughs> There's an analysis paralysis with NE, like, cause it's like, yeah. there are some, there are so many possibilities that you see that that can also lead to inaction because it's like, ah, uh, like, I don't know which path to take, you know? So that could be a problem. I mean, I, I guess that a lot of it boils down to, I think we also just need to be reassured with that NE going on that like everything is going to be okay, right? Again, that we mm -hmm. can handle things that we're yes. not going to be totally useless and incompetent and mess everything up and everything's going to be a train wreck. Yes, 1000% agree with that. Like just, I think for us, like just knowing, just telling us like everything's going to be okay. Like I even, one of my IN, INFP friends, <laughs> she says like, we have a little inside joke where, where she says like, you're going to be okay, Patrick. <laughs> like it's, it's a quote from a TV show, but like, but just having that reassurance that we're going to be okay and that we're competent and smart enough that like, if things aren't okay, we'll be able to figure things out, like really goes a long way. So yeah, Spacey, that was like the perfect, perfect response. Yeah. That is definitely polar SE because the SE is like, I'll just figure it out as I go. I can adapt yeah. to the sensory environment. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas for the IMPs, it seems like they lack the confidence that they can do the thing and figure it out as they go. It's yep. almost like they need, it's almost like you need to have it all figured out in advance. Yeah. Or you're gonna freak out. <laughs> yep. Exactly I mean, it. I've found, and I don't know if this is like any second slot or or tapping into any or whatever it is, but it, it, the main attitude that I've found that helps me is, let's see what happens next. It's it's the, the curiosity drive. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that we have to live on when we're SE polar, basically, to, to keep us moving. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that because it then it like instills a sense of like maybe potential excitement or wonder, like oh, like, you know, let's, like, because that, that's, like, when I'm reading a book, like, that's what, like, propels me forward and sucks me in the book. It's like, well, what's going to happen next? Or mm -hmm. with a TV show or whatever. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I understand that a lot of these things generally can apply for anyone watching. So we're saying these are patterns, not rules. So mm -hmm. maybe you fit into this and you're a different type or you're an INFP or an INTP and you don't relate. This is more of a pattern rather than a, a need be rule, but this is definitely a thing. One of the tips that I would give for these two types, if you're a friend of these two types, is to just throw them into a situation before they're ready and you know they're <laughs> gonna be okay. <laughs> Sometimes they need someone to help them with the first step and then mm -hmm. they can take over from there. But the First step is always the hardest. Momentum is always the hardest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. For ex example, with Spacey, I just put him on these videos and <laughs> he's just, he's like ice. <laughs> yeah. And it, it helps. It helps with his SE. Yeah. I like surprises. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like a similar situation happened with me. Like, Joyce, you know, I was like terrified to do the first video with you, like I almost, <laughs> I almost canceled like a couple hours before. Um, but like, I just had to get over 
you know, my hangups and just be like, if something happens, because like, I, I, you know, I, I know how notorious YouTubers and YouTube comments can be super critical. So I think that was a big fear for me. So, um, so I just had to like get over the fact that like, if somebody says something, so what, or Joyce can like delete comments. And so just having that reassurance, <laughs> um, I was like, okay, and I did it. And like, it actually wasn't like, it wasn't nearly as scary as I thought it was. And I'm so thankful I did it because like, I got to meet people like Spacey or get to know like other um, people that I've done these with like Jamila or Paul Matson or uh, like a handful of other people. And I've had such wonderful conversations and like, I would never have, um, I would never have experienced these wonderful things if I didn't have that reassurance from Joyce that like I was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And this this tells a story about imposter syndrome. So mm. <laughs> a lot of people can suffer from imposter syndrome, and it's feeling like you're not ready for it. You don't have the skill set, or there's something missing from you from doing this properly. And the best way to overcome feeling like an imposter is experience so exposure therapy so just going out and doing it doing the sc <laughs> going out just taking action doing the thing yes. anyone can have imposter syndrome but the sc pullers i noticed a lot of them have it <laughs> right yeah because like we're not like we're not one to like jump into experiences so like like again i think it's particularly acute for us um so um even though like anybody could do it, but like there's just a, a stronger propensity that we would more likely, IMPs would more likely do it. So yeah, but imposter syndrome is a big one as well. Definitely. That's a big one for me probably, yeah. Yeah. That's part of the reason it's so hard for me to make videos. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> I know, I don't see you post as much anymore. I'm like, where are I'm your like, good I'm videos? Like, what do I have to say that hasn't already been said? But um... I, I like them. Uh... What else? I was gonna say something. It seems like INFPs, for whatever reason, uh, when compared to to me at least, and a lot of other INTPs that I've met, they seem a little bit more self conscious and like camera shy and like afraid to to put themselves out there, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a definitely a big thing. I, I I'm not sure what that what that is like compared to like INTPs. I think. I think it's because like it's probably our something to do with our feeling, right? Like we I like... think my my best theory on it is that with, with the F I T E axis going on, you're basically you're more attached to the outcome of mm, what mm -hmm. happens. Mm. I, I think that's a good yeah. That's a good theory. Sounds so crippling. It is. It is. It really is. <laughs> I feel for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I at least yeah. detach that much. Um, yeah, because like I think like INTPs can detach a little bit more, like from the self. So maybe they might not feel as self conscious. I think honestly, ISTJs people may not realize it, but they have a little bit of the problem as well. But having that both FI and SI going on is like this double whammy of being like uber sensitive to like yes anything imaginable. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's exactly it, yeah. right? Because, like, I think, again, like, INTPs, like, kind of have a, a DGAF attitude sometimes. <laughs> They're, like, uh, even though they can be susceptible because of inferior FE to, like, criticism, but I think, like, they suppress it a lot more than we do. Yeah, <laughs> so like, better. So, like, yeah. we, because of dominant FI, like, we, like, really internalize a lot of that, um, a lot of criticism, and we're particularly sensitive um Take more even, stuff personally even, oh yeah yeah right because like everything is directly tied to us because of fi being so personal yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and so personal to the self it's tough be nice to them guys yeah that's be nice true to us. we have it rough when we're growing up <laughs> <I mean. laughs> that's true i notice with blind spot se sometimes it can cause a staying in your head a lot so sometimes a lot of time can pass by and you still haven't gone towards something like there's a sort of oh. time blindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... I'm so bad with time, mm -hmm. like really bad. <laughs> like I don't understand. It's like, I have no concept of time. We work it's in, terrible. we work in phases. It's like we, yes, 
we, we go for we coast for a while and then we go and we're like oh my god time got away from us and then we run to catch up really fast and then we coast for a while again oh you know but yes i uh, that's i that's so funny because like i see my life in phases <laughs> like yeah. like right now i'm on a per- i'm in a particular phase i'm like kind of transitioning out of it but like after i graduated from law school and i realized i didn't want to be a lawyer like I, you know there's been a five-year phase where i've just been like like i've spent so much time probably more than i should have because of fear um like really 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 making sure that like i wanted to go to to grad school to become a professor so like i mean i'd spent five years of just like doing research and reading and all this other stuff you know and just like you know and and all of a sudden like here i am in 2021 i'm like oh wow like here we are and like you know like uh, it's been five years since i've graduated and now i have to like you know i mean i'm, I'm i've been preparing but like it's just yeah it, yeah it just takes a while you know like it just it just it it really does be I, I you know because when you're in your mind so much like you just really don't you're not present and then you really don't have like a concept of the passage of time so like you're, it's like it's like when you're in your mind you're in like the fourth dimension essentially you know? <laughs> like, yeah you're you exist outside of time yeah. yeah you figure out whatever you were there to figure out mm-hmm. just kind of wake up and it's like okay I time to uh, move on to the next phase whatever that is. Yes. Yeah. That's... And, and and there's something about SI that like pulls us in and makes us feel like really comfortable staying where we're at. Um the or the 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 F F I T I S I. Like there's a sense of comfort in just fantasizing and thinking about the idea. So that makes it even more like <laughs> difficult to get out of that and not like beware of time. Well, it's also all about knowledge. Like if you if you don't expand your environment, I guess, so to speak, you're gonna have more knowledge of whatever your current environment is. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there's that comfort too. Yeah. Knowing that you know everything there is to know about this already. Yes. Yes, that's so true. And like, and, and it's so funny, because like, that's why like, that's why I was researching so much about grad school, because like I'd made I felt like I made a mistake going to law school. And I was like, I'm not going to make this mistake again. So I'm going to research everything I know. So that way I don't, you know, so that way I know what's coming mm. up ahead. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it seems with extroverted intuition users, I noticed them talking a lot about the switch. So they'll talk about how they'll go down one career path or one move in their life or one Mm. school path that they wanted to take. And then later they change their mind. And then later they are afraid that they're going to change their mind again and then change their mind again. Yeah. I I really think we're plagued (laughs) with this switch thing. I was just watching on another channel, like an interview with an INFP. And she said that like she went to school to like for healthcare services and she graduated and got a job but it wasn't what she thought it was again experience (laughs) so then she was like i guess i don't want to do this so then she went back to school to do something else and then like before completing her program she got offered a job and then so she took that job um because she thought it would be better than what she was doing at school and that didn't turn out correct so then she went back to school and i feel like this is just so typical of NE users or like NPs in general, or but INPs definitely. You know, it's funny, like five years ago, I wouldn't have said this, but my life is really starting to look like that too. Because, <laughs> like, I, I feel like, I mean, I don't know you like super well, Spacey, but like, just like to me, the I don't know if you, are you still in the did you are, are you still doing the I don't know, were you doing like welding or something like that? I don't know, I was like, thought it was super random the job that you had doing some sort of something um, right now i'm i'm a maintenance mechanic at a factory that makes um it makes those plastic car parts that are chrome plated oh okay uh, mm-hmm. yeah see like random <laughs> yeah and yeah i'm i'm living in michigan still but i moved again so really interesting with some imps because of the blind spot SE or the lower down SE, what will happen is 
they won't be the ones impacting reality. They'll be the ones receiving the impact of reality. So it's almost mm. like if if the world takes you down the path, like for Spacey of being, is it an electrical engineer? I don't know what you, I guess technically I am a maintenance technician. Yeah. So I noticed IMPs go down these really interesting job paths because it's kind of like they go with the wind. So if yeah. the wind <laughs> takes them Pretty much. to that job. Whatever pays the bills. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that really sounded like, I mean, that's not like exactly with the, the example I was just giving about the, the YouTube video I saw, she kind of just went wherever it took her like, Oh, this job didn't work out. I guess I'll just drift wherever the wind takes me elsewhere, you know? So I, I feel like my life kind of has well, that you know, trajectory. doesn't matter where we go. The old thinker keeps on funking. Yeah. Well, it's just, sometimes it's hard. Like, I, I mean, my parents have been like better at it, but like sometimes it's hard having like STJ parents where they're like path, you know, there's like a strict path you're supposed to follow, but I'm like, but you know, I'm kind of like all over the place. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, so that can be difficult sometimes. I mean, I don't know. I feel like we're, we're pretty focused on like growing psycho spiritually Yes, thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah, whatever, right, whatever that involves. I mean, we don't really care much about every, anything else, and that often makes us, I think, look like bums. But uh, again, it's we're not. I guess we don't really care again exactly what job we end up having, or, or really, because that's not really what's important. Um, that's a really interesting point, Spacey, about how INTPs and INFPs will care more about exploring the metaphysical universe of ideas, and. Mm -hmm. So the sensory position in life may take an after seat. Mm. And so exactly. it can cause different after effects. Yes, like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, like my, my dream has been like, um, like I wish that like I could be like one of the, uh, um, back before like, um, research was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know if industrialized is the correct word, but like back, like before um, research was like made, you know, professionalized, that's the word I was looking for. Where like, you know, you like, if you want to do some sort of like intellectual research, you have to do it at a university, you have to get a degree and then you have to like stick within your discipline. Um, like before, like thinkers, like whether that be, you know, David Hume or Aristotle or St. Thomas Aquinas, um, you know, or any of those other thinkers, like they, they, they were just, they just basically philosophized and like did whatever, you know, they liked, you know, and, and they didn't, they didn't have to worry about like getting a degree for it or like working a particular job. They were, they were the kind of the consummate like slash intellectuals, like, you know, David Hume was a historian slash economist slash philosopher slash um, what else, whatever else he was, you know. So, like, um, same thing with Adam Smith. He was a moral philosopher, an economist, uh, you know, or they called it political economy then. I, I mean, like, they, you know, so they just uh, there was a dabbling in a lot of different areas and you didn't have to like and you could just do that. and You could make a living off of just being that. And I just wish that I could. I wish that you could still do no, that. That was a viable thing. <laughs> that's what that's what INPs are supposed to be. Basically, we're scholars and intellectuals and seers and shamans and whatever the fuck ethicists, you know, you call it. moral philosophers. But it's uh, you know nowadays, obviously, since we don't, you know, those aren't available to us anymore because those aren't jobs that provide anything of like material value yeah. necessarily and so uh you know our skill set isn't really valued a lot of the time in the real world no so we just do the best we can with a normal job that's why yeah. we're depressed all the time yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah you'll find a lot of imps and random jobs you you wouldn't expect them to be in because it's like well <laughs> the world just requires you to pick a random job and then now it, it that that's why like christian said you get a lot of depressed infps and intps it's like it's like well i don't know someone asked me why i have this job it's like well it's like they told me that i had to get up in the morning and that i have bills to pay that's why i have this job like, what do you 
<laughs> like I can't, I can't live in this society no. like without doing something like that, you know? Yeah. So, or otherwise I just, trust me, I would, I would not, I would not pick that. I mean, I would not, I would not do, um, like if I could do what you, if I could do the like what academia allows you to do but without the academia part like i would totally like if because like most of those thinkers were autodidacts like they just were self-taught and you know they just fraternized with a lot of really smart people and that's how they learned or sometimes like you know they would just go to print it like you know um uh plato's um symposiums you know or symposia you know they just get a group of people and they would just you know so you just like learn from a person or something like that you wouldn't have to it wouldn't be it's not so formalized you know and that's how i but, learned best I yeah would. yeah so but you know i this, this is the this is one of the hard things right like with like of like the the what you wish in your mind could be and like that rub that tension that rubbing up against like reality of what is mm -hmm. and like there's it's I, i've I struggled with that for a long time of like fighting it and resisting it. And so like the, mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge for INPs is finding a way to make peace with that, like to resolve the tension of like making a compromise between what, like what you envision in your mind and what you'd like to do and like practical everyday reality. Mm. Yeah. Would you consider yourselves eternal daydreamers? Yeah. Absolutely. I think SE Polar essentially makes life it feel like a dream mm -hmm. all the time, kind of. Yeah. It really does. That, that's a good way to describe the perception that it lends somebody. Yeah. I like Michael Pierce's quote, um, what he, um, how he describes NE is, um, what does he say? Um, um, something like passive observation of the unreal like i feel like that's a really great description of yeah pretty much yeah of, any, <laughs> of real any. fog over the eyes sort of right right yeah. so that's why we have like this glassy look in our eyes because we're not really we're seeing beyond reality beyond se you know well well how what is how does that saying go it's like i've got two eyes for looking but one eye to see yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly it. We use we use our seeing eye m more than our looking eyes. And that's not necessarily a good thing all the time though. That's No. <laughs> it causes it can cause a lot of problems. Yeah. What are the strengths of that? I mean the strengths of it is that you get you get like a lot of information like on the screen in front of you all the time, I guess how I would put it. Yeah. You know, how valuable it is or what you do with it is a little, you know, is up to date, right. I guess, but... Yeah, I because I, I feel like values are so, you know, obviously they're, they're subjective and especially societal values. So, like, I mean, the benefit is that, like, you can see see things that other people maybe aren't seeing you know, you can see potential or possibility, mm -hmm. but like, you know, not everybody might think that like the potential that you see is of any value or substance. Like it's more of like a personal thing for us. Or it may not actually be possible. Right. That's like, the, yeah. that's the other thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. The, you know, it's just maybe. Right. <laughs> exactly. Not a hundred percent on that. That is so cool. And so is it ever possible to take your INFP or INTP out of their eternal daydream state? Or yeah. are you just always in it? <laughs> I'm actually pretty good at getting out of it now, but it's like I'm I'm in a state where I'm constantly just forced out of it to the point where I, I really, I just had to suck it up. And it's really exhausting, but like I, I basically turn it on and off when I need to, you're either in, I'm in either an extroverted mode or I'm not. And when I when I have it switched on, I am constantly basically scanning everything around me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, just, yeah. 
Adderall definitely helps. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Um, I think age helps also like therapy has helped me be more present um age helps yeah experience yeah really Exa exactly experience. age usually lends experience yes mm -hmm. absolutely so um so those are like yeah so those are things that can help because otherwise like i i i've had so many times i can't tell you how many times where like i I start somewhere and I end up somewhere and I don't know how I ended up at the place <laughs> where like there's a in between that I'm like, wait, why did I come here? Where, what happened in between? <laughs> Cause like, I'm just not present. So yeah, that's why I like, like if, if something did happen though, like we would be there. Yeah. Yeah. Like for the important things. Sure. There's that's happened to me. Like, like we're like, as far as like not knowing where like, like, why did I end up here? Like, sometimes, like, if I'm driving... Well, this was before I, I, I was taking Adderall. But, like, sometimes, like, I would be driving and I would be so, like, kind of spaced out a little bit that, like, I, I'll miss an exit or something like that. And I'm like, oh. Right, yeah. That's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, yeah. Ex bottom line, experience can help. Yeah. And I have an INFP friend who will like forget their items, forget their wallet in a store, forget their jacket in an Uber, forget their oh, stuff in very important places and then th they lose it. Yeah. So there's an absent mindedness to some NE users, like mm -hmm. extreme absent mindedness. <laughs> the amount of things I've lost. That's why I'm so excited for the new Apple ta air tag. It's a tracking, a little tracking device. <laughs> they just announced it, so I, I need one of those. Um, I've gotten better, but like, man, when I was younger, like, I would lose everything. Mm -hmm. Oh God, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, I lose shit. Not again. It's not quite as bad as it used to be, but wow, yeah, it's hard to keep track of objects. It really is. Yeah, there's just definitely like a lack of object permanence. You know, <laughs> like I think that's a really big problem. For IMPs, especially ones who have ADHD, um, like, again, like, the, there's this physical reality thing that's, like, <laughs> of being SE blind, and it's just, like, objects do not seem to have a permanent space in reality. <laughs> it's just, like, you know, one moment, like, it's there, and then if you lose, your, you know, focus on something else, oh, it doesn't exist anymore, you know? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> well... The physical things only exist for the purpose of satisfying, you know, abstract exercises. Yeah. <laughs> That's such an yeah. INTP uh, yeah. answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. It's in service of us, not the other way around. But I would yeah. say, really, what SC, a lot of what SC Polar is to me now is it's just this... Uh, it's it's like a rubber band where as soon as you let go of it, it snaps back into this uh, never ending loop of like post processing that basically just looks to most people like just being spaced out, where we're just processing shit and making connections and whatever the hell happens. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it takes a lot of force of will to keep the rubber band stretched into extroversion or whatever, and it's like a muscle that you have to work out. <laughs> Yeah, that's like a great analogy because, like, mm -hmm. I don't think, like, not maybe some people understand who are not INPs, but like, like external reality is extremely over can be extremely overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think like a lot of INPs probably also have HSP, like hypersensitivity, whatever the P is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it stands for um uh just or, or like or even like a, an auditory sensory processing uh disorder um th that like it's just like it, it's so overstimulating to the brain so like we have like so you're saying like we look spaced out because like we have to process all of that it's like so much information when i go to new york city um i've been four or five times like Manhattan, I'm exhausted after th 
you know, three days. I mean, I'm already exhausted, like, after the first day. But, like, especially after three days, it's almost like I have to take a vacation from a vacation because there's so much, like, olfactory, auditory, <laughs> and visual stimulation that my brain cannot process it all at once. Like, it's extremely overwhelming. We, all we can do is, like, dissociate from some of it until it's, like, a tolerable amount. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Process yeah. the rest as fast as we can, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. A lot of scientific studies show that introverts, they have a lower sensory threshold with taking in new stimulus, whereas extroverts have a higher threshold for taking in new stimulus of the external world. And so it can cause this like overwhelm that introverts tend to, some introverts tend to get from, from just the outer world existing and putting onto it stimulus. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what I want a lot of young INPs to know, I guess, is that that post-processing thing, which I guess is just your introverted judging mostly, that that happens even if you're not watching it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can you can go away and do something else. Yeah, it's always in the back. It's like it's like the water we swim in. Yeah, like it's basically yeah, always there. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's good for the people watching, like to know that you know, when your INP is spaced out, they're not doing nothing. They're actually doing a lot in their head. They're actually processing a lot in their head. Yeah, you just don't see it. A lot's happening though. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, they may not even be able to really verbalize or articulate it either. Yeah. I mean, I guess the TI helps with the articulation of it in most cases, but not always. Yeah. It's it, it again, that's like another thing that like you'd have to practice with, like whether that's like, you know, reading a lot. So you have more vocabulary and then trying to incorporate that in your language, because otherwise, like it's really hard to like, um, like articulate. Because the sometimes the stuff like the ideas in your head um, or feelings for INFPs, um, no, it's very, you know, it's very abstract. Sometimes there's not like language for it because it's like, because it's not all, like, it's like sometimes like an amalgam of different things happening at the same time. So right. it's like, I don't know how to like describe like these kind of different, these different ideas or feelings kind of like colliding with each other and then explain it to you in a way that you'd understand. Right, exactly. Yeah, and so, Thank you, Stacey and Christian, for coming on <laughs> and discussing yes. the SC blind spot in these two types. Yeah, it's really great to learn about how these types are in a like a constant state of daydreaming and coming up with these deep philosophical, intellectual insights. These types have a really a really thought provoking type of quality to them, and they're able to <laughs> be in this intellectual space and have all these interesting conversation topics to bring up all the time. It's great, Spacey, how you're talking about being spaced out and your name's Spacey. It's very mm -hmm. fitting. And there's also space behind you too. So there's the <laughs> trifecta of space. Yeah, I really amped it up space. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making everything <laughs> on brand. <laughs> and Christian, it's nice to hear your passion with the topic of your SC blind spot. And whenever you talk about ADHD, you, you get into this passion zone too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems like you like to advocate for mental health a lot or different diagnoses a lot. Yeah. I, I can see very that. much do. Very important to me. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see those little wisps of the causes that you fight for in your day to day speech. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice to see you gunning towards your PhD and adding to the mm -hmm. literature. And yeah, it'll be a great help to the world when you get that. Yeah. So. <laughs> this is a brilliant conversation. Um, yeah. Enjoyed talking to you both. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure, Joyce. Yeah. Definitely. This was a tight video. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is really fun. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm.